Sunshine. Fuck uh, yeah. Your driving license? Yeah, well, uh... Come on, son. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh. There you go. Care for registration number? Oh, sorry, mate, it's not my motor. It's a friend, so I'm just waiting to drive him home. You can't take him cell phone? No, he's very law-abiding. Never drinks and drives. He drinks, I drive. <laughs> Celebration, is it? Something like that. Old soldiers' reunion. <laughs> Go back to sleep now. Yeah, cheers. Good night. Good morning. Out on the briny, with the moon big and shiny, melting your heart of stone. Mr. Dale, please, I hey, promise you, go, Sam, please. I'll be home We by are the... singing. Ready for a big finish, your okay? Melting your heart of stone. Itchy-goo, itchy itchy-goo, itchy 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 for I'd like to get you on that slow boat to China. All to myself, I really mean it. All to myself, I don't mean maybe. All to myself, I'm all. Oh, magic, you be magic. Hey, you all right? A nightcap? Well, I haven't seen him for donkey's years. So I'll see him tomorrow. Nah, he's a woman's coming down tomorrow. Mate, you stop the car. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think he's hoping she and Jiminy Arna's about to make a return visit. Oh, Laura, he's full of the social graces, isn't he? Hello, Mr. Dale. My best mate in the army, Terry. I would go to hell and back again on my hands and knees for Yorkie. You'll get down on your hands and knees if he yonks his aubergine what's name all over my carsy floor. Have no fear. Have no fear. That is something that a bloke like you don't know nothing about, you see. What a squaddy will do for his oppo. Comradeship. I tell you, Terry, blokes like you do not know what you owe to blokes like Yorkie and to blokes like me. Yeah, well, tell me tomorrow, eh? Just get him cleaned up and get him out. I'm knackered. Yeah, oh, we was knackered, weren't ah. we? We was knackered, but we stuck it out when you were still in nappies. And I, I am talking in terms of blood, sweat, tears and human sacrifice. Oh, you weren't called up till 1949. No, no, but we was out there, weren't we? Oh, My yeah. liar. Oh. Emergency. Doing our cobblers for king and country. Far East land forces. Jungle hat, jungle boots and... Jungle Greens and 3-0 Lee Enfield rifles, Tommy Bandits. When we was given it all that, Sergeant it... Sedgwick and Corporal Daly. Yeah, that's all very well. But you never fired a shot in anger, did you? I mean, you told me yourself you spent most of the time propping up the bar in the Union Jack Club or whooping it up Chinese Rattley. Yeah, but we were there, weren't we? Look, I, I tell you, it is because of blokes like Yorkie and blokes like me that blokes like you are living at this moment in time, in a democratically civilised society. Civilised? Still feeling manky. You okay? Manky's not the word for it. I feel like a rabid rat that crawled up my digestive tract and died. Oh, good, 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 good. Good night, Kip, and a furry brand that you feel on top of the world. I'll get Terry to run you back to your hotel. Colonel, back to barracks. There you go. Now, oh, that's all I need, isn't it?
There you go. There you go. Hang on. Special delivery. He's got puke all over him. Don't tell me. I've just driven him all the way around the South Circular. Try the Salvation Army. Oh, don't fatty me, pal. He's booked in. He's a resident. Well, he should be in before this, then. This isn't Liberty Bloody Hall, you know. It's a registered hotel. This can't come and go when he please. Listen, if someone's booked in... All right, all right, all right. Shove him in. Come on. I'm all right, Joffer. I'm all right. Thank you, driver. And you're a great advert for the British tourist board. And he's a great advert for the British tourist. Yeah. Hello. Gordon Bennett, you're not still in kit, are you, Terry? Do you know how long it took me to take Rotherham's Ruddy Llewellyn round London? Do you know what time I got to bed? Not much later than me, I shouldn't think. <laughs> I was up with a lark, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Eh? Hey? No, no, not you, Terry. Listen, look, the reason I'm belling you is I want to ask you a favour. Show him the size. Just for half an hour. Houses of Parliament, Soho sex shops, Buckingham Palace, all that. Look, take him round the Crockley Horse Guards. No, I'll tell you what, Arthur, I've got a better idea. Why don't we leave him in that grotty doss house you call a hotel and send the Horse Guards round to clock in? No, come on, it's Saturday. It's not on, is it? Look, Terry, you know me. Now, you know I wouldn't worry you if I wasn't being grabbed by the short and curlies. Look, I stroll round to the office to do half an hour slaving on the accounts and what happens. Five minutes ago, the VAT man walks in. I'll be with you in a moment, Mr. Samuelson. I'm just having a word with my second in command. I'm lumbered, aren't I, Terry? Look, I'll meet you both at the Winchester at one. It's a favour, Terry. I mean, Yorkie would do the same for you if you ever fancied a swift weekend in Rotherham. Swift weekend in Rotherham? <coughs> His room for you. I don't mind ringing his room, but it's no use ringing his room, is it, if he's not in it? And he can't be in it if his key's hanging on the hook, number nine, and if he hasn't got his key, he can't get in. Maybe he's somewhere else in the hotel. Maybe he's in the dining room having breakfast. Breakfast finishes at 9.15. It's half past. Carlos was on breakfast. What time did number nine come down for breakfast, Carlos? Uh, nanny number nine didn't come down for breakfast. Might be in the lounge. Mm, we've got a lounge, apart from where you're standing. He might be having a bath. I suppose you have got bathrooms. No, yeah, number nine not in hotel. That is probably gone out for a paper, I'll wait. He's been not in the hotel all night. No, I don't want to argue with you, pal. I argue with you. I argue with him. Yesterday, I argue with this man. At six o'clock, he wants afternoon tea. I tell him it's too late for afternoon tea. He shout, he swear, like a big gorilla, not like man. Yeah, that sounds like him, yeah. This morning I said, I will not argue with this man again. I go up and say, come down now, you big bugger, or you'll be late for breakfast. I knock on his door, I go in his room, and his bed is not used. We slept somewhere in the gaff last night. I dropped him home at 3.30 this morning. No, not here. No, no. Maybe you drink too much. Maybe you take him to wrong hotel. It was here, sunshine. I stood on the doorstep for God knows how long, being slagged off by your night porter. No, no. Yes. No. Yes. No. Trev, got a sec. Remember him? Never set eyes on the guy before. Who is he? Who's he? You just stood there and told us you were chatting to him last night. Trev's our night porter. No, 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 no. You weren't on last night when I turned up. Never left the building. Who was the other geezer then? No other geezer here but me last night. K. 
came on at 10 o'clock. Right, Carol? Right. Came off at 9 o'clock this morning when Carol came on. Right again? Right, Trev. Are you calling me a liar? No. No. Hmm. Yorkie disappears. Two night porter. Are you sure it was a different night porter? I'm not colour blind, am I? This morning's one was West Indian. Yeah, it's got to be a logical explanation. Look, do you have to sit here noshing that? I didn't have any dinner, did I? Oh. And what was all that Sainsbury's you give me about seeing a VAT man? You were in a kit. Look, I've got my problems. Got two of them. Two Won't of solve them by sleeping with a vacuum, will you? Well, oh, this appears off the face of the earth. I mean, it's James Bond time, isn't it? He could be MI5. You told me he was a bookie. No, only because he told me he was a bookie. Yeah, look, do you mind? Yeah. Yeah. Right, come on. Terry? No. Hold tight. Oh, no. Look, two of them. Are they members? How do I know? Gaming machines. Place is going steadily downhill. Look, what it... Look, it is not helping to solve my Otto's problem with you sitting here stuffing your face. My God, you don't take no prisoners, do you? Listen, what about... After I dropped him back at the hotel, he nipped out and ended up with a dodgy bird. Bross? Why not? He's a happily married man. You're a happily married man. Are you home every night? Look, it is now 11.33. He's got to be on CO's parade at 15.40 sharp. Stand at Victoria Coach Station in a soldierly fashion. Chin in, chest out. Thumbs in line with the seams of his trousers. Meet his old woman. Yeah, fizzing garlic. Ugh. Bloody hell, I didn't do that. You weren't capable, dear. You barely tried. The flesh was weak and the spirit wasn't very willing. How'd I get here? Not on a Snow White Charger minicab. I have this arrangement with this friend of mine, Charles. Don't you remember Charles? He's only got one end. You don't get many taxi fellows that have one end. I thought his name might ring a bell. <clears throat> oh, fire. Don't worry, it's all intact. Apart from what you slip me of your own free will. No offence, you have to watch your step, though, when you wake up with a prosy. Oi. Not so much at the prosy, if you don't mind. You are a prosy. What are you if you're not a prosy? I'm a part-time model. What are you modelling? Bloody plasticine. I'm not a professional one, any roads up. I'm in it for my plant money. And I don't bother to do it when Erwin's away. Erwin? It's my husband. My husband? He's on container lorries, juggernauts. Is no Chris Christopherson, but I don't bother to ask him what he gets up to on a wet weekend in Brush. Have you lost something? Me cakes. Your what? Me strides, me bloody pants. They're where you throw them when you fell in air last night, waving them around your head, singing. I'd like to get you on mm, a slow boat. Where do I throw them? Out the window. Hey! Hey!
carpet. Trousers? Again. Look, we haven't taken our eyes off that place for the past half hour, right? Since I last went in. He wasn't there then, he ain't there now. Well, where is he then? I don't know, do I? Well, he must be somewhere. Oh, true, Arthur, he must be somewhere. <laughs> Probably propping a bar up, pouring endless pints of lager down his throat, giving someone a right ear bashing about, oh, bitter's better up north. Yeah. Hopefully, he bought the arse of someone big enough to chin him. Callous, Terry, you are callous. Nut and bolt we were in the army. Adjacent bed spaces. <laughs> Many's a time he saved my life on active service. What'd he do? Stop you knocking yourself sideways on that Chinese rump, eh? <laughs> Lent me his best bald boots for guard duty. He even done jankers for me. Geezer comes down to London once, goes absent. In up with his missus. It's down to me, Terry. I have let him down. Go on, then. What do you want me to do? Will the real night porter please stand up? I mean, there's two of them. One's bent, the other's a ringer. They must both know something about him. Sort one of them out for me. Well, lean on him. No, 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 no heavy stuff. Just incline yourself a titch in his direction, you know? Good boy. Them. You must have legs like an anorexic whippet. Have you got any big ones? The old woman's coming down this afternoon and to that bloody coach station. Oh, big deal. Your missus. Oh, when sister's popping round here at three, I'm supposed to go and look at some kitchen fippants with her. Brenda's as broad minded as the next, but I mean, look at it from her side. Hmm? A fella sitting here in his red undies with your brother's wife watching racing on the telly. I'm telling you, dear, you're on your little bike before she comes. Like this? Think of something. Think of what? You should have thought of that last night, when you flung them out of the bedroom window. <laughs> Didn't you bring a spare pair down with you? Of course I did. I've got a lovely check sports jacket and a pair of slacks. But they're hanging up in my hotel wardrobe, aren't they? Simple. Simple, then. All you do is you telephone your hotel, you ask to speak to the manager, and you tell him to go to your room, and you tell him to put the spare pair in a cab. Simple. Do you know what? Your bloody brain is. Oh, I don't know. Fellas, where would you be without us ladies? What's it called? What letter does it begin with? Oi, are you deaf as well as daft? Your hotel. What's the name of it? I don't know. You what? I've forgotten. I don't remember what it's called. And I pull mine from me. How many days book me in? Oh, sod it now. Oi, what's your game in? Oh, hello, chef. Never mind, bleeding hello, chef. Don't you hello, chef, me. Flannelin won't get you anywhere, sonny. Soft soap, don't cut no ice with me. No, don't be like that. Don't be like that. I'll give you don't be like that. I'll be how I like, Horace. Because that's the way I am with everybody, bleeding me. Come here. No, hold on. Come hold on. here. What you call that? Chef's hat, innit? Is it? Isn't it? It might be a chef's hat to you, Sonny. But it ain't a chef's hat to me. This is what I call a chef's hat. A chef's hat ain't floppy, Horace. It's a badge of office. It stands up straight, piss proud. It's starched. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll see what you mean. So you can take these back with you, every one, and the rest of the bleeding stuff you walloped on me last week, and you can tell your chief 
I won't stand for it. What chief? Your chief. The big-headed, four-eyed git in the office. What office? Don't clatter around, Doris. Your office at a Sunbeam Laundry. <laughs> I'm not from the Sunbeam Laundry. Not from the Laundry? No. Well, it's Laundry morning. It's always this time, Saturdays. That may well be, but it's nothing to do with me. No, I'm, uh, I, I make trips. I won't have that gramophone of his going full blast. Tell him. And I won't stand your mate's jungle drums giving me an ear bashing. Not this morning, now tell him. Yeah, all right, yeah. Uh, listen, I forgot, where's his room again? Through the door, up the stairs, turn left, past the bogs. Ta. Oh. Yeah, you're not wrong, are you? <laughs> Wouldn't have a lot of fun on honeymoon with that. <laughs> this stands up. Richard. Just keep calm, keep calm. I'm not a tea leaf, I just want to chat, all right? Now keep calm. All right. Fresh water fish. Four letters. Beginning with tea. Terrible, terrible. Tr trout. T R O. Oh, bugger it. Compton Hotel. No. Crown. No. Comfort. No. Comfortum Court Residential Hotel. No. Uh, just a minute. I'm trying to get this picture in my mind's eye. I can see the road. I can see these steps, windows on either side. There's this name over the door. Go on, go on. It's gone. Tench. T E N C. Please don't do that. <coughs> We're in stuck. You haven't drawn a complete blank. No, not entirely, no. I have solved the amazing case of the two mysterious night boarders. The spade's a real one, and he plays truant three nights a week to play in a jazz band. The other one's a moonlighter. Front desk don't know anything about him. Well, what's he do in real life? He's a school teacher. Yeah, Barnstead Comprehensive. <laughs> His parents had a sense of humour. His name's Ollie Colliver. <laughs> well, where's he live? Ah, well, that's where we've drawn a blank. We're in Lumber there. The colour guy I don't know. He's just got a phone number. Well, it's all right. We'll ring him up. I've already done that, haven't I? There's no answer. Nobody in. Hit a brick wall. No, 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 no. Not entirely. We know he's a school teacher. We know which school, you said. We know his name. We'll go round there. No, hold on. It's Saturday, isn't it? Schools are closed Saturday. It's pointless. We shall see, my son. We shall see. I'll drop the colour keys for a couple of quid. I'm glad you can afford it. Debenham Court. No. Debenham Crest Hotel. No, I don't think it began with a D any road. D doesn't ring a bell. What do you think it began with? I don't know. I wish I did. I'm dying for a bite. Well, you can't bloody well have one. Now, come on, get your thinking cap on. Deck of cards, motor in. Deep Dale, Delmere Private. What's that? Missus bought it for me. Don't wear it. Only for the missus. Del Monte dining rooms with limited overnight accommodation. No. Nope. Dorchester. No. It's Chubb. What is Chubb? Five across. Freshwater fish, four letters. Chubb. <laughs> it's a kiddies crossword. Yeah, what, what was the name of that jazz band again? The one uh, Lemonade played in? Uh, South Ealing, Mississippi Stompers. New Orleans stuff, innit? Oh, don't ask me. 
I'm a Francis Albert man myself. Oh, blue eyes. Did I ever tell you how much I bunged over the odds to hear Sinatra sing? In, often, in often, first? yes. Ah, it's only money. My way alone was worth every penny. Do you know, Terry, tears roll down my cheeks every time I play that tape. It can't be Chubb. Chubb don't begin with T. Well, five across don't begin with T. You got five down wrong. Have I? Yeah. It's not tart, it's cake. I mean, she didn't say, if they ain't got enough bread, give them tart, did she? Who? He's a brainy bugger, is Arthur. He's got it all upstairs. The stunts he used to pull in the army, I'm not kidding. <laughs> He's a crafty dog. Ring him. He booked you in. Has he got a car? Got a car? He's Arthur Daly. Arthur Daly's Jack the Lad. Have you ever heard of him? Never. How ignorant can you get? Are you sure you haven't got a can of light ale? Or a lager? I'm flaming gagging. We've got more on our plates this morning than topping you up. I ate this sort of evil, greasy, cheesy eye time up. Do us garlic in it, I keep on getting the taste of it. Never heard of bloody Arthur Day. Arthur Bloody Daly. He's only one of the biggest car dealers this side of Watford. And you call yourself a Londoner? I don't call myself a Londoner. I come from Westcliff. You stand me to come from Westcliff on sea, lass, if you've never heard of Arthur Daly. Got a car? He's got more cars than British Leyland. Get him. So get off his arse and come round here in one of them. He can run you back to your hotel and he can bring you round a pair of trousers. I don't know where he lives. Clock in, can you? No, oh. no, it's not here. Hold on, that's him. Where? Refereeing. The ref, that's him. Sorry, mate. How long they got? The second half's just begun. Oh, that's it. You're knackered for half an hour at least, aren't you? What's the score? 15 8 to Barnstead. Oh. We've got to talk to him. He's not going to come off just to have a chat, is he? Look, Yorkie's old woman will be bombing down the M1. Barnstead are winning 15 8. Which is Barnsley? Come on, you hoots! Come on, come on, throw it! Come on, you little Barnsley! Get up, you little Molly! Come on, you Would you mind, sir, not infringing along the touchline and not interfering? Don't you talk to me like that. I used to play for the old grounds. Terry, stop the game. Leave it out, Arthur. Well, look, if I stop the game, will you G up the ref? How are you going to stop it? Well, create a diversion. What sort of diversion? Watch this. What's he up to? What's his game? Hey! What should that be? After him, boys! Hey, what the hell's going on? Well, he's catching his eye. Oh, no. oh, no. Suit. Don't worry about your suit. You can get that dry clean, can't you? It's not so easy with your face. Is it bad? Well, it's not bad, no. I mean, a few stitches here and there, you won't even see the joint. Stitches? <laughs> That's all right, I'm having you on. No, stop bleeding, now. Do you see me go, Terry? See me catch that ball, tuck under my arm, head down and run. Oh, memory lane, that was. Huh? Wing three-quarter in the army. Did it show? 
Oh, oh yes. magic, no. magic. Gareth Edwards. <laughs> Jimmy Edwards. <laughs> Don't laugh. I did my whack out there. Don't worry. I was out there where the bullets was flying. It's made a welcome change. Here, yeah, there's a brush in the glove compartment. Oh, dear. Still another link in the chain. Another step nearer. What did you say they were called? Who? Oh. Mini cabs for them. Oh. Uh, Diva Cars. Yeah, apparently last night, after I dropped the Rover and Rover back at the hotel, he bung a night porter a few quid over the top for a dozen beers. He's two down and ten to go, and he's good as new, isn't he? Ranting and raving about getting back on the town again. <laughs> I know you've got no time for Yorkie, Terry, but you must admit, you have to look up to the bloke. <laughs> the night porter got in the minicab just to get shot of him. There you go, that'd do. Kids, I could have them, you know, if I was a vengeful type. Eye for an eye. Cheek for a cheek. No, I could have him up the juvenile. Of course, you know what it is, don't you? Yeah, it's symptomatic, innit? Yeah. Well, don't stand here rabbiting. Yorkie snapdragons cane in the motorway. Let's get going. Even though we know the name of the minicab firm, we still got to find the actual driver. How many one-armed minicab drivers are there in Greater London? You what? Yeah, this geezer's only got one arm. God, Struth. How long was that fella looking for a one-armed geezer on the telly? What fella? You know, went on for years and years. You know, what was his name? Even at the death, he still didn't find him. Well, what chance have we got? Rotherham 91824. Hello, boss. Yeah? Reg, have a look on my desk. Any bits of paper? Anything scribbled on my memo pad? Yes, boss, yes. I'll have a look for you, boss. Hey, guess who I've got on the blower, Darren? Droopy drawers. And guess what he wants to know? What? Well, he's in London, isn't he, and we're up here. He's only ringing us to find out where he is. The silly, stupid bugger. Are you going to tell him the bad news now, or save it for later on? It's a dead duck, this, before we even run it up the ruddy flagpole. Hello, oh, what, Reg? Look, never heed why I'm asking, just do it. Have a good scout round on me desk in the top drawer just in case I jotted it down. I am hanging on. Don't go away, he says. Where the hamlet am I going to go to? Didn't jot it down, I'm wasting my time asking. Reg! Reg, while you're faffing about, how did the first results go for us at all three meetings? He had what? Listen, Reg, you know as well as I do, it should have been laid off when he got the second one in. Darren! Darren! I've told him. What did he say? And you can tell that, Darren. You can start checking out the job creation scheme. <laughs> what was all that about? There was a one o'clock at Kempton Park. There was a one o'clock at Adock. There was a 1.15 at Newcastle. One second fave and two outsiders. There's a punch on in a five-pound treble up. First three results and I'm 950 quid down the swanny. It's not my day. Wasn't my night either. God only knows wherever. Uh, open that front door and let Charles help you in. That's him. Charles. He must know where he picked me up. Ring him. If I knew his number, I'd have phoned him ages ago. Not at his home. The name of the firm he grabs for, ring them. He'll have a radio car that can radio him. I don't know the firm he works for. I met him in a pub. Would you be sitting there now like a limp plant if I did? I was only limp last night. Watch it. Left off, you like the old bastard. Not so much of the old. I've got a result. St James's Church, not in ill. I've got the directions. Arthur. Terry, do I look old? No, 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 no. Truthfully. Look, the wedding kicks off at quarter to three. Then he's driving the happy couple straight down to Gatwick. Can't be easy being a one-armed minicab driver, can it? Probably on automatic. Well, which hand he gets the tips in? Quiet in your radio. 
I say, would you mind quieting your radio? No, you don't have to come to the to the right. Just one step to the right, please. That's right. A little bit more on the left. Just a little bit more in. That's fine. Nice day for a wedding. Bye. 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 Who says we're too late? Hold on, hold on. What are you doing? Stone me! Stone me, Arthur. Not bad, eh? Go on, chat him up. Eh? Mini cab geezer, chat him up. Find out what he's done with Yorkie. Now listen, you were the one who nearly changed the wedding into a funeral. I'm not gonna cop all the aggro. Look, I'm driving the stagecoach, Terry. You're riding shotgun. You shoot the Indians if you want your pay dirt. Poor soul. Hey, what the hell's your game? Yeah, I'm Come sorry on, about then. that, mate. Well, I should think so, no. We're in the middle of a wedding here. Yeah, no, it's a bit difficult. Your head case, you are. It's you're looking trouble, We're looking son, for trouble, son. Look, you nearly you killed my trouble. missus back there. Get those glasses off. Go on, Ricky, drop him. What? People like you should be off the road. Oh, yeah. Hold that. I does karate, you know. Oh, well, I does king for oh, Hold on, hold on. What's the oh, karate? No, no, this one's mine, Terry. Oh, stand back, Tarzan. Listen, is it all right if he apologises? Who hey? apologises? You apologises. What good's apologising going to no, do? Damage has been feel. done now. No, on your wedding, wedding day, day and all that, but he's a nutter. Honestly, when his bottle goes, anything could happen. Yeah, I mean, you saw he drove the motor, right? Now, just screw the nut. I'll try and calm him down, OK? All right, well, look, if he apologises then. That's right. Apologise? I'm not apologising. I'll kick him in the nutshells. You're Michael. gonna spend the rest of your life backing away? Yeah, uh, no. Just that's put not this the on, point. will you? Got a lot of bleeding spurs supporter in those braces. Don't you start. Get in the motor. Is everyone hurt? No, no, is anyone hurt? No, no, is anyone hurt? You seen Trina's? <laughs> Irwin's cousin Gavin's Trina? No. You should. She's got American colonial. Oh. Hmm. American colonial right through. All her kitchen fitments. You know what she's like. She was all stripped pine and horse brasses one time. And she's gone Arga. Hmm. She was wondering what you were doing with yourself, what with Irwin on the container lorries, and, and now that your Sarah Jane spread her wings. It's a phase they go through, isn't it, living with Nigerians? I said to Clive, she won't marry him. Still, Trine was wondering what you were getting up to. Oh, this was a nosy cow. You're Gavin's Trine. Oh, excuse me, Brent. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Oh, Mr Daly, what a relief. <sighs> yes, yes, I do know who you are. They seek him here, they seek him there. We found a bugger. Tell you what, swing a left here. Here, be a doddle. Whip through here, pick him up, then go and meet his missus. Yeah, but we're never going to do it in 15 minutes, are we? Well, Saturday afternoon, traffic's light, the lights are with us. Yeah. There is just one little snag. What? He got no trousers. Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. No trousers. Her sister-in-law came round. She had to hide him, didn't she? She would, wouldn't she? In the garden. Well, without his trousers? Yeah. <laughs> what are you looking at? Well, I mean... Well, it ain't Peter Bleeding Pan, is it? Here, stick that on.
he's your oppo, so give him your trousers. How can I? I am driving. Well, I'll drive. Pull over. You're a good lad, our kid. You're a bobby dazzler. Oppos. Yeah, oppos is one thing. Trousers is something bloody else. <laughs> Here you are. You can use this to cover yourself up with. Just touch that mirror my way, Chuffer. Yeah, there you go. Good lad. All right? It's for the missus. Hello. Oh. Hello. 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 Changes to Seventh Bridge, for Newport, Cardiff, Bridget, and Swansea. Well, get out and say welcome to London, then. Hello, lovely. How goes it, eh? Good trip down. Do yourself up. You want to see? Your trousers, your dozy lummock. You're showing everything you've got. Yes, you're right. No, but shutting the stable door when the horse has bolted. My road, they're not mine. I can see they're not yours. I should have think where you got them from. And where have you been until this time? What have you been doing all the time, eh? I've got no sticky. Dane to ask what you got up to last night. Not a lot quiet night. A bite to eat with Arthur Lovey. High tie notion, a glass of table wine. It was very nice. Well, it won't be high tie notion table wine tonight. What did you got in mind? Nothing spectacular. I was hoping Arthur might come up with something. She's worse than he is. Where is he? Point in Percy at the bottom. Hey, Terry, do us a favour. G him up a bit, will you? You don't think I'm staying here, do you? Eh? What's your phone for? Well, I haven't got the motor, have I? You might have to run us back. Leave it out. It's Saturday night. I'm on a promise. Even I'm entitled to some pleasure. Uh, it's work. I'm knocking out the vintage Bentley, the Yorkie. You'll never. Yeah. Surprise present for his missus. Wedding anniversary. Look, half an hour in that old banger, she'll have him in a divorce court. <laughs> I thought he was your best mate, your oppo. You lent him your trousers. Well, trousers is one thing, Terry. Business is something else. Yeah, get him in, Terry. Go on. Hey? Yeah, go on, go on. Vodka slimline, gin and orange for the Duchess, and find it the best for his lips. Go on, go on. <laughs> Our kid, make mine a big scotch. Ails piss poor down here. <laughs> hey, get one in for yourself. <laughs> hey, Terry, stay on halves, eh? Don't want any breathalyzing. Fasten your seatbelt, kiddo. We're in for a bumpy ride. <laughs> She's all right, the missus, isn't she? Magic, you're <laughs> magic. Oh, to myself, I love. Uh, gin and orange in there, please. Mary, don't so don't so don't so little arms, you die me. You can't only die me too, wouldn't you? When you go a minute, Jim and Orange. Oh, Mercy, don't so, don't so, don't so, little, let's see, I mean, I can't leave, I mean, you. 
Oh, I can't. 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 Oh,